And that's a good place to start. What the heck? Togon. Hey there, Michael Pencil here, bringing you a classic Martian algebra problem. Just kidding. Uh, so this is sort of a response video to a fellow math YouTuber who, granted, has quite a few more subscribers than I do, Michael Penn, uh, who has been doing um, quite a few neat little geometry problems that he has both come up with or found in various texts, and it inspired me to come up with my own problem that I think was a fun little thing to solve, and so I'm going to show you two different ways to solve this problem. So the question is, we have ourselves an equilateral triangle. And inside that equilateral triangle, we have a square that is inscribed so that one side lays flat on the base, and then the other two vertices of the square are touching the other two edges of the equilateral triangle. And for the sake of simplicity, we're going to say that the length of the side length of this square is 1. So this is 1, and this is 1. Okay? And then we see that we have another equilateral triangle up here, because since this is 60 degrees and this is 60 degrees, while this is also 60 degrees, this has to be a similar shape, and so I've inscribed inside of that another square with the same properties as the first one, but in this smaller equilateral triangle, and then another one on top of that, and so on and so forth, getting infinitely tiny as they approach the corner like that. And the question is, what is the total area of all the squares? So I'm going to show you two different ways to solve this problem. One of them is going to be geometric, the other one is going to be geometric. So when I say literally geometric, I mean comparing the sizes of uh, the squares to the triangle. So what I want you to notice is that what we have here, instead of thinking about it as one equilateral triangle, think about it as a bunch of stacked isosceles trapezoids that are all similar to each other. It shouldn't be too hard to see that they would all be similar because these are the same side length, these are the same side length, I mean, to each other, right? And then we've got two 60 degree angles in the bottom right corner of all of them, and then two 120 degree angles in the top right corners of each of the trapezoids, because we have a right angle from the square plus the remaining 30 degrees from the triangle. So all four angles are the same, and they're isosceles tri uh, trapezoids. And uh, as we can see, they're sort of all scaling down the same way. So they're all similar shapes, and so you want to think of them as stacked uh, trapezoids in that sense, and the reason I want to do that is because now what I can do is ignore the rest of them for a second and simply look at the bottom base trapezoid. And what I want you to realize is that these two triangles are going to be congruent to each other, right? They have two of the same angles, 90 and 60, and they share a side length 1. So by the angle-angle side theorem, or AAS, these two triangles are congruent. And because of that, I can take this triangle and put it over here to fill in that spot. So I haven't changed any of the area, I've just moved it over to there. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to find out the area of this rectangle. I know that this length is 1, so this square is 1 by 1, which is just 1. But now I want to figure out this length here. And since we know that this is an equilateral triangle, this must be pi over 3. And since this opposite side here is 1, we want to find the adjacent side. And so the most convenient trigonometric function to use would be the cotangent in this instance. So we have that the cotangent of pi over 3 is equal to x over 1, which is just x, right, adjacent over opposite. But we know that the cotangent of pi over 3 is just 1 over the square root of 3, also known as the square root of 3 over 3 which means that our length x is the square root of 3 over 3. Not bad so far. Since we know that the height of this rectangle is 1, the area of it must just be 1 times 1 plus the square root of 3 over 3. Since we are multiplying by 1, it just means that this length here is also the area of the square. So the area of the square is 1 plus the square root of 3 over 3. But what I want to answer now is what fraction, and I said square, I meant the area of the rectangle. What I want to find out now is what fraction of this rectangle is the area of this square here. Well, since the area of this square is just 1, I just need to divide the area of the square 1 by the area of the full rectangle. So I just need to do 1 over that amount. And whatever this simplifies to will be the ratio of the rectangle that is inside this square, the area of the square being the fraction of the rectangle. So I'm going to... Uh, Simplify this by multiplying everything through by 3 root 3. So what I'm going to end up with is 
I'm sorry, I'm going to multiply through by 3, so I'm going to get 3 divided by 3 plus the square root of 3. And now, uh, to simplify this even more, I'm going to rationalize the numerator and the denominator by multiplying by the conjugate of that. So I get 3 minus the square root of 3 times 3 minus the square root of 3. And of course, this simplifies to give 9 minus 3 root 3 over 9 minus 3. And then we can divide everything by a factor of 3, and we're going to end up with 3 minus the square root of 3 over 2. And so this is the fraction of the rectangle that I've got here that is taken up by this square. So now that we've figured that out, let's just put this part of the equilateral triangle back. So we're just going to erase that there and redraw this triangle part in. And then we're going to realize that the fraction of that trapezoid that is the square is this number. But also the fraction of the smaller triangle of trapezoid that is this square is also this number. And the fraction of the trapezoid that's taken up by this small square is that number, right? The scale factor for each square in each trapezoid is the same. And so because it's all, all the same, I can actually just take this number and multiply it by the area of the entire equilateral triangle to find out the total area of all the squares. Because the total area of all the squares is going to take up the same fraction of the equilateral triangle as one square does in its corresponding trapezoid. So let's take a look at that. First we need to find the base and the height of the equilateral triangle, and then we can multiply those things together and divide by two and we'll have the total area. So notice that this is a symmetric picture, so this will also be the square root of three over three. And so the base is going to be root 3 over 3 plus 1 plus root 3 over 3. So the base is equal to 1 plus 2 times the square root of 3 over 3, which if we do a little simplification, we can see is 3 plus 2 times the square root of 3 over 3. And now we just need to find the height, which is this right here, the perpendicular that cuts through all the squares. And we can actually do this using some basic trigonometry. So we know that half of this base, which is from here, the midpoint, all the way out to the end, is going to be half of this number here. So we know that we're going to have to use the tangent function because we have an opposite side and an adjacent side. So we know that the tangent of pi over 3, which is equal to the square root of 3, is going to be this height here that we'll call h divided by half of the base, which is this divided by 2, so 3 plus 2 root 3 over 6. So I can just multiply h by the reciprocal of that thing. So I'm going to get 6 over 3 plus 2 times the square root of 3. Because half the base is this divided by 2, and I just reciprocated that. And now I can solve for h by simply multiplying both sides by the reciprocal of this and getting it over here. And so I get that h is equal to square root of 3 times 3 is, I'm sorry, square root of 3 times 2 root 3 is uh, 6. Square root of 3 times 3 is 3 root 3. And we're divided by 6 because we just reciprocated that over to the other side. We can do some nice simplifications and we end up with... 2 plus the square root of 3 over 3. Oh, look at this. Oh, my mistake. Hmm. And we end up with 2 plus the square root of 3 divided by 2. And that is the height of the triangle. So now we have the base of the triangle and the height of the triangle. We need to simply multiply those together and divide by 2, and we'll have the total area of the triangle. So the area of the triangle is going to be the base, 3 plus 2 times the square root of 3 over 3 times the height, which is 2 plus the square root of 3 over 2 divided by 2 because of the area, it's the area of a triangle. And now we just have to foil out the, uh, the numerator there and we get 3 times 2 which is 6 
plus 2 root 3 times root 3, which is also 6, plus 4 root 3 plus 3 root 3, which is 7 root 3. All divided by 3 times 2 times 2, which is 12. And so the end result is 12 plus 7 times the square root of 3 over 12. And that is the area of the equilateral triangle that we have here, when the inscribed square has side length 1. Now all that we need to do to find out the total area of the squares is to multiply the area of the equilateral triangle by the fraction of that area that is taken up by each square, and that's this number right here. So all we need to do is multiply these two things together, and we'll have our final answer for the area of the squares. Let me just clear the board, and we'll try that now. So we know that the area, the total area of the squares, is going to be the area of the triangle, which is 12 plus 7 root 3 over 12 times the fraction of the uh, triangle that is taken up by the squares, which is 3 minus the square root of 3 over 2. And now all we need to do is FOIL this out, and, we'll should ha and we should have our answer. So the bottom is going to be 12 times 2, which is 24. And the top is going to be 12 times 3, which is 36, plus 7 root 3 times negative square root of 3, which is going to be minus 21. And then we're going to end up with 21 root 3 minus 12 root 3, which is going to give us 9 root 3. And now all we have to do is combine our terms. And we end up with 15 plus 9 times the square root of 3 over 24, a factor of 3 in the numerator and the denominator that we can cancel, which leads us to the final area of the, to the total area of the squares being 5 plus 3 times the square root of 3 divided by 8. And so that is the final answer, the area of the squares in total, and that's the geometric way of solving for that answer. Next we're going to do the geometric way, which is to use a geometric series. Because you might notice that each time we scale down from one trapezoid to the next, we're multiplying by the same number each time. And that is causing it to scale the same way every single time we go from one trapezoid to the next smallest one. So we need to figure out what that scale factor is, and then see that we're just going to be adding powers of that together to get the, the, to get the final answer, which should evoke something of a geometric series in your mind. So let's see if we can derive that same answer using a geometric series. So what we need to do is recognize that we're just adding up the areas of the squares. And we need to find this length right here because this is 1, so whatever I need to multiply by to scale from one square to the next is just going to be this number here, because this is that number to the zeroth power, then we're going to have that number to the first power, then the second power, third power, and so on. So in particular, we can call this number x, right? And we know that since everything is scaling down the same way and that this is also an equilateral triangle, that this length must be x divided by the square root of 3, just like this is 1 divided by the square root of 3. So everything scales down the same. So this right here needs to be x over the square root of 3. Since we will also have another x over the square root of 3 here, and the side length is 1, we know that x plus x over the square root of 3 plus x over the square root of 3 is equal to 1. Factoring out an x, we see that 1 is equal to x times 1 plus 2 over the square root of 3. We're solving for this length here, the length of this smaller square. So we just divide this number over to solve for x, and we see that x is equal to 1 over 1 plus 2 times the square root of 3. We can, of course, rationalize a little bit by multiplying everything by the square root of 3 in the top and the bottom. So we get the square root of 3 over the square root of 3 plus 2. And now we can simply multiply the top and bottom by uh, 2 minus and I'm just going to rearrange the bottom there, so it says 2 plus the square root of 3. And now we're going to rationalize the, the denominator by multiplying the conjugate, uh, namely 2 minus the square root of 3 in the top and bottom. And what we're going to end up with is 2 times the square root of 3 minus 3 divided by 2 squared, which is 4, minus root 3 squared, which is 3. So 4 minus 3 is 1, and so we actually don't need that. 
So x, the length of the smaller square, is precisely 2 times the square root of 3 minus 3. Now let's just estimate what this is. The square root of 3 is about 1.7, so 2 times that's going to be about 3.4, minus 3 is about 0 0.4. So because this number is definitely got an absolute value of less than 1, we can certainly add up powers of that thing. But we don't just want to add up powers of this number, because then that would be like adding all of these lengths together, right? Because this is x, this is x squared, that's x cubed, right? We don't want to add up those lengths, we want to add up the areas of each of the squares. So we know that this is going to be x squared in length, and this is going to be x cubed in length, if you're just talking about the little lengths of side lengths of each square. But the area is going to be each of those things squared. So we're going to have x to the 0 squared plus x squared plus x squared squared plus x cubed squared. So really, we're not adding up all the powers of this number x. We're adding up the powers of this number x squared. So what we actually want to do to find the area is take the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 2 times the square root of 3 minus 3 all squared to the power of n. Since here we have 1 squared, x squared as the area of that one, x to the fourth as the area of the pink square, x to the uh, sixth as the area of the green square. So we're adding up x squared, the powers of x squared. Since x is less than 1, we know that x squared is also going to be less than 1. So this is actually just a geometric series. And we can use the fact that this is the generating function for 1 over 1 minus x and plug this in for x to get our final answer. So we know that this is going to be equal to 1 over 1 minus 2 root 3 minus 3 squared. And if the math gods are good, then evaluating this should get us the same number that we got before. So let's square the denominator there, or square the term in the denominator, and we end up with 1 minus 2 root 3 squared is 12. Um, 3 squared is 9, and we're going to get minus 2 times 2 times 3 times the square root of 3, which is minus 12 root 3. Distributing the negative, we end up with 1 over 1 minus 21, which is negative 20, plus 12 root 3. So we get 12 root 3 minus 20. And now, I don't know if this is the same as our other answer. We need to rationalize the denominator. So we're going to multiply the top by 12 root 3 plus 20 and the bottom by 12 root 3 plus 20, and we're going to end up with 12 root 3 plus 20 divided by the difference of the squares of these terms. So 12 squared is 144, root 3 squared is 3, and 144 times 3 is 432, minus 20 squared, which is 400. And so that is going to give us 12 root 3 plus 20, divided by 432 minus 400, which is 32. And then we can factor out 4 from everything there and cancel a factor of 4. And I'll write it as the, the 20 plus 12 root 3. And you'll see that we end up with, if we cancel a factor of 4 from the top, we're going to get 5 plus 3 root 3 over 8, which is the exact same number that we got before. So you can do this using comparisons of the size of the triangle and the size of each square in, in its like little respective spot. Or you can simply directly calculate the area by adding up the areas using a geometric series and you will get the same number. Uh, and I think that is a good place to stop. Thanks for watching. Check out my Patreon, check it out. I got some perks that you might like to have in your front pocket. Check it out, thanks, goodbye.